Becky attended her high school reunion last weekend. Hello. All of her friends seem to be doing really well in life. Connor showed up wearing clothes from expensive brands. Hello. Matilda had not just one, but two of the latest smartphones. Oh. Tom showed up in a fancy sports car, and Beth was wearing a luxurious watch on her wrist. Take a good look at Becky's friends. Can you tell who is really rich? Well, let's see. If you look closely, Connor didn't take off the tags from his clothes. This probably means that he's planning on returning them after the reunion. Yeah. Matilda's phones are fake. Look at the label. It's just a copy of the original brand. Ah. And Beth's watch is way bigger than her wrist. Which means that the watch is not really hers. <laughs> so, Tom is probably the richest person at the reunion. Oh, yeah. Amy's favorite band is in town, and she really wants to go to their concert. She asks her stepmother if she can go, mm. but she says she will only allow Amy to go if she does a series of things for her. Oh. The first thing the stepmother asks is for Amy to bring her some water in a colander. Mm. To get this right, Amy needs to think outside the box. Okay. Can you help Amy figure out how she can do that? Amy needs to freeze some water and put the cubes in the colander. Yeah. Technically, frozen water is still water, right? <laughs> Next, her stepmother asks Amy to pick out the perfect evening dress for her. Amy walks into her stepmother's closet, and there are three dresses, a red, a green, and a blue. Mm. Take a look at the picture. Which dress should Amy choose? If you look closely, the button on the blue dress is about to come off. The green dress has a big paint stain on it, so Amy should pick the red dress. Yes! Before Amy can take the dress to her stepmother, the woman enters the room. She sees the stain on the dress and starts to shout at Amy, How could you do this to my dress? But Amy says she didn't do anything wrong, and that the paint was already there when she walked into the closet. Yes! The stepmother asks Amy to find the culprit. If she could figure out who had stained her dress, then Amy could go to the concert. Okay. The three main suspects are Amy's stepsisters, Ella, Bella, and Gabriella. What? They don't like Amy, so it's likely that one of them splashed paint on their mother's dress in order to frame her. When the stepsisters are out of the house, Amy sneaks into their bedroom to try to find the culprit. Take a look at the room. The first bed belongs to Ella, the second belongs to Bella, and the third bed belongs to Gabriella. Can you tell who did it? It was Gabriella. Her bed is the third one on the left. And if you look closely, it has a bucket of paint under it. Uh -huh. Emily and Barbara are getting ready for a girl's night out. Yes. They are putting on makeup and getting their hair done. They have pretty similar tastes, and their things look pretty much the same. Mm. But one of them has more money than the other. Oh. Looking at the image, can you tell which one has the more expensive stuff? Take a look at Barbara. Her dress kind of gives it away since it's obviously a knockoff. Hmm. So Emily is the one with the more expensive stuff. Harry decided to backpack around the world on his own. Yeah. On the plane, he sat next to a girl. He asked her where she was from. Yes. But instead of answering, she showed him two emojis on her cell phone. Oh. Take a look at the image. Can you tell which country the girl is from? Let's see. That's an iron and a piece of land. I guess she's from Ireland? As soon as Harry landed in Paris, he went strolling along the streets to find a place to stay. He found a cute little hotel and decided to go inside. Big mistake. Why? Take a look at the window on the last floor. It looks like there's a ghost. Yikes. I'd look for another place to stay if I were him. <laughs> After he found a better hotel to stay in, he decided to get lunch. He ordered the classic French onion soup. Yeah. But when his dish came, it was filled with cockroaches. <gasps> he called the restaurant's manager to tell them about the incident. The manager said, This is unacceptable. I will find the person who did this and fire them immediately. 
There were three suspects. The cook said that he had prepared the soup as usual. It was okay when he passed it to the waiter. The waiter said that he hadn't touched the soup. He just served it to Harry and hurried to take the order from another table. The manager also questioned the cleaner, who said that he had spent the last hours cleaning the bathroom and had no idea what the fuss was about. Can you tell who is guilty? No one. Look at the ventilation system. It's full of roaches. They must have crawled out of it and fallen into Harry's soup. Yikes. There are three passengers in the business class of an international flight that is headed towards Rome. Take a look at these three people. The first lady looks pretty well dressed. She's wearing a luxurious designer handbag and is texting on her expensive phone. Hello. The guy in the middle is working with stock charts on his laptop. And the third guy is enjoying a cup of coffee while reading an article in the Financial Times. Can you tell which one is the real billionaire? Let's see. The woman may look well-dressed, but if you see the tag on her clothes, it says... 100% polyester. It's unlikely that a billionaire would wear something like this. The guy working with stock charts is wearing old, ripped shoes. I doubt that's a fashion choice, so he's probably not a billionaire. Oh, That leaves us the last guy. If you look closely, the article he is reading is about him. The title of the article is, The World's Newest Billionaire. Oh, yeah. I guess we found our guy, huh? <laughs> Detective Smith was called to investigate a burglary at the city's museum. Oh. A priceless diamond disappeared, and the thief left no trace behind. After analyzing the museum's security cameras, Detective Smith gathered three suspects. The security guard, the museum's curator, and a visitor. The security guard said he only left his post during lunchtime, and he could swear that the diamond still wasn't missing at that time. Hmm. The museum curator spent the day guiding a tour of the museum for a foreign group. Hmm. They came to see the diamond at the beginning of the tour, and it was still shining bright in its place. The visitor said he only popped in for a quick visit, and didn't even pass through the Metsi aisle where the diamond was kept. Hmm. After these three interviews, Detective Smith found the thief. Can you tell who it was? It was the visitor. First of all, he knew the exact location of the diamond inside the museum. Plus, take a look at that string he's fiddling with in his left hand. Detective Smith pulled it from under his sleeve and, voila, the diamond was attached to it. I guess he didn't have time to go home and get rid of the diamond, huh? Julie and her friends decided to spend the weekend at a cabin in the woods. They arrived on Friday evening and spent the night playing board games and telling spooky stories. When they woke up on Saturday morning, they found that someone had stolen all their food supply. Ah. The door's glass was shattered, but other than that, there were no signs of who could have done it. So the group decided to search the surrounding woods to see if they could find the culprit. Take a good look at the scene the group stumbled upon and see if you can find out who took their food. What's that at the left corner? Those look like bear footprints, huh? And not just one but rather an entire family of bears. Oh, and they even left an Oreo wrapper on the ground as evidence. Yep, these grizzlies were the culprits for sure. Atlas woke up in the attic of an abandoned house. He tried to find a way out of the house, but all he could find was a room with three doors. Each door hit a different danger. The windows and floor behind the first door were made entirely of magnifying glass, which meant that the sunlight would probably burn him if he entered. The second door hit a room full of poisonous gas, and behind the third door was a hungry lion. What should Atlas do to escape? He should wait until it's nighttime and use the first door. Sydney told her mom that her gymnastics team would go to a sports camp for the weekend. She asked her mom to help her pack a bag for the trip. Her mother packed everything she thought her daughter would need. When Sydney came back from the weekend, she was telling her mother all about the trip. Okay. But somewhere during the conversation, she asked her mother why she hadn't packed a toothbrush. The mother immediately knew Sydney was lying about where she had really been that weekend. Hmm. How? Because Sydney's mother did pack a toothbrush. 
but she put it under Sydney's gymnastics clothes. If Sydney had really gone camping, she would have used the clothes and found the toothbrush. Kimberly discovered three bags in an old attic along with a note. The note said that there were $1 million inside one of the bags. It also said that the two other bags were empty. She only had one chance to figure out which bag had the cash, and she could trust that one of the messages written on the bags was true. On the first bag, it said, the cash is not here. On the second bag, it was written, the cash is not here. The last bag read, the cash is in the second bag. If you were Kimberly, which bag would you choose? You should choose the first bag. If only one of the clues is true, then the money is in the first bag. The police have been after Mr. Burke for many years, trying to prove he's involved in illicit activities, but they never managed to catch him. One day, Detective Lawrence decided to make a surprise visit to Mr. Burke's office. As soon as the detective arrived, Mr. Burke's secretary said he was away on a business trip. Hmm. The detective asked to see Mr. Burke's office and took a picture of it, but he wasn't allowed to touch anything without a warrant. So, Detective Lawrence went back to the station and got a warrant. When he returned to Mr. Burke's office, he noticed someone had been in there. Take a look at both pictures and try to find out what Detective Lawrence saw. The desk lamp is tilted and the books are in different places. Someone definitely was in that room. Uh -huh. Detective Lawrence decided to search Mr. Burke's entire office. In one room, he found there were footprints up until the middle of the room, and then they disappeared. The only window of the room was open. Oh no, Detective Lawrence shouted. I can't believe he escaped again. He took a picture of the room and took it to the police station. At the station, he showed the picture to the other detectives and one of them said he had cracked the case. Huh. Take a look at the picture. How did the detective solve the case? The detective understood that Mr. Burke was a shapeshifter. This explains why the footprints didn't reach the window. Plus, look at all the bird food on the floor. He probably shapeshifted into a bird and escaped. A new ice cream parlor opens up in Matt's neighborhood. Yeah. He goes there to check it out. It's pretty crowded because they offer one free ice cream serving to each customer. Mm. Matt meets a pretty lady named Kitty in the line. He falls in love with her right away, but unfortunately, she's already married. Oh. Can you find her husband among these guys? It's the second man. He's the only one who doesn't hold any ice cream. And Kitty is holding two ice cream servings, one for herself and one for her spouse. The next day, Matt missed his alarm. And now he's late for work. His boss is going to be furious. Matt might even get fired. But wait a minute. It turned out that the big boss is out of the office today. He's having a last minute business trip. So Matt can relax. Yeah. But suddenly, the boss calls him on the phone. Hello. Where are you? You got 10 minutes to get to the office. Matt replies, I am in the subway right now. Hmm. Well, I got something I need you to do for me. Call me when you're in the office. Matt is a pretty genius liar. Yeah. How did he fool his boss? Matt had a subway noise track on his computer. He played it when he was on the phone with the boss. Clever. Matt enters the local bakery on the way to the office. Hello. The cook brings two trays with fresh tartines. Take your time and try to spot 10 differences between them. Ready to see the answer? Here they are. What about these two breakfasts? Can you find 10 differences? Over here. Matt arrives at the office. Oh no. Oh. Someone has changed the password on their corporate computer. It consists of seven digits. Matt texts his coworker and asks about the new code. He receives the following reply. Can you help him figure out the code?
The number of fingers implies the right digit in the password. So Matt should enter 1, 0, 5, 2, 3, 1, and 0. Matt is an illustrator. His boss sends some files and asks him to separate the images and add some colors. Oh. Unfortunately, all the layers are merged. Can you spot six different objects in this picture? Here they are. What about this one? Can you spot 11 objects? Over here. Matt's sister, Ashley, is getting married. He arrives at the event, and she asks him to take a picture of her with some friends. But someone pranks the bride in the middle of the photo shoot and spills paint on her beautiful dress. Can you guess who did it by just looking at this picture? It's the man on the right. He has a rope in his hands, and it's tied to the bucket. Ashley changes and the wedding goes great. After the ceremony, they throw a party in a restaurant. This place is very popular among the newlyweds. Matt faces three brides in the lobby, and spots the fake one right away. Hello. What about you? It's the third lady. She's wearing regular jeans and sneakers under her dress. And also, she's wearing a wig. She must be just trying on a costume. <laughs> the wedding dinner begins, and the waiters serve the first course. But suddenly, the lights turn off for 15 seconds. When the power is back again, Matt finds out that his golden watch is gone. He questions four suspects. Karen says, I was eating the wedding cake when the light turned off. It was delicious. Nick says, I was talking on the phone with my grandpa. When it got dark, I just continued our conversation. David says, I was washing my hands in the bathroom. And Stella says, I was taking pictures of the food for my Instagram. The local cuisine is so fancy. Who's lying? Karen. She said she was eating the cake. But take a look at the wedding cake. It hasn't been cut yet. The dinner has just started. It so happened that Matt is spending the Christmas holidays with three of his ex-girlfriends. They go to a fancy ski resort in Alaska. It was the first day of vacation when Matt was found poisoned in his bedroom. The police interrogate his ex-girlfriends. All the three ladies went away that day, and Matt stayed in the hotel for a nap. Megan says, I was shopping all day long. Lola says, I went to the beach to sunbathe and swim. When I returned, I found Matt lying unconscious. And Sophie says, I went to the local coffee shop to write my novel. Nobody wanted to join me. Who's lying? Lola, it's Christmas time, so it should be very cold in Alaska. She couldn't swim and sunbathe outdoors. Finally, Matt gets better and leaves the hospital. Yeah. He returns to the ski resort and takes a look at the mountains. What are they doing wrong? This guy is riding a snowboard. He doesn't need ski poles. After the Alaska trip, Matt gets a new job in New Orleans. Oh, yeah. He finds a great apartment and moves in. Three neighbors knock on his door to greet the new neighbor. One of these ladies is a real witch. Can you spot who exactly? The first lady brought a cake. It looks pretty innocent. The third lady brought a plant. Looking good too. But the second woman brought a basket with food and there's a snake crawling around her gifts. Matt wakes up in a weird maze in the middle of the night. The only way to escape is to walk through this labyrinth. But unfortunately, there are four dangerous creatures waiting for him on the way. First of all, there's a Gorgon who turns everybody she sees into stone. Secondly, a werewolf. It's a full moon, so he's very hungry. The third creature is a tree goblin. He can grab people with his strong branches and it's impossible to get out. And finally, there's a siren who can use her singing to make you do anything she wants. 
Luckily, Matt has four magic potions which can be helpful. Each potion has a 24-hour effect. If you spill the first potion on anybody, they'll become silent. The second potion will make any creature very weak. The third potion turns anyone into a vegan. And the fourth potion causes blindness. Can you help Matt distribute the potions among the creatures correctly? Matt should use the Silence Potion to neutralize the Siren, use the Blinding Potion against the Gorgon, turn the Werewolf into a Vegan, and weaken the Tree Goblin. The next day Matt receives a postcard. There's a note hidden in this face. Can you figure out the message? The features of this face form the word Liar. Matt purchases a tour to see the sights of the state. He takes a nap on the train. After a while, he wakes up and sees that his tablet is missing. Oh, no. Matt interrogates four tourists nearby. Liam says, Sorry, I was listening to the music, and my eyes were closed. I don't know who did it. Willow says, I think it was Ronald. He's very suspicious. Why would he need so many gadgets on a tourist trip? Ronald says, I have a bunch of my own gadgets. I don't need your old, outdated tablet. And Mary says, I'm sorry, but I was sleeping. Can you spot the thief? It was Mary. She hid Matt's tablet inside her magazine. Hi. Matt goes to the dining car. There he sees four tourists speaking an unknown language, so Matt can't understand them. But still, he manages to spot this lady's boyfriend right away. Can you see him too? It's the second guy. They have similar tattoos on their necks. Matt wakes up locked in an abandoned house. He finds three doors, but only one of them leads to freedom, and he has only one chance to find it. Hungry tigers are waiting behind the first door. There's a big fire behind the second door, and a werewolf is hiding behind the third door. How can Matt escape? He should just wait until the fire goes out. Yeah! Detective Brightbrain was sitting in his office when his phone rang. Richard Brooks, a jeweler, said he had just been robbed. Brightbrain arrived immediately at the boutique, and Mr. Brooks explained what happened. I spent the entire morning showing diamond rings to a gentleman in a gray suit. He was extremely polite and knew a lot about diamonds. When I looked down to grab the store's most expensive ring, I felt someone hit me on the head. I fell forward, and when I woke up, the guy was gone. Brightbrain didn't ask any more questions. Instead, he wrote a report saying Mr. Brooks wasn't robbed. He was actually faking the whole thing. Take a look at the scene. How did Brightbrain come to that conclusion? If Mr. Brooks fell forward, the weight of his body would have broken the glass counter in front of him. And look, there's not even a scratch. The next day, Brightbrain was driving to work when he got hit by a red Chevrolet. The guy got away pretty fast, but the detective managed to see the car's license plate began with 6-2. Back at the office, Brightbrain tracked down the possible owner of the vehicle, Mr. Neander. The detective arrived at Mr. Neander's house together with the police and immediately saw a red Chevrolet with a 6-2 license plate in the yard. But there weren't any signs of a collision. Brightbrain interrogated the subject, but Mr. Neander said, I swear it wasn't me. I haven't left the house in two days, and I can't use my car because I lost the keys a week ago. Brightbrain approached the vehicle and leaned on the hood of the car to peep inside. He immediately said, I know you're lying. How is Brightbrain so sure? The detective tried the simplest way to detect whether a car had been recently used. He checked the temperature of the motor. As the hood was still warm, this showed that Mr. Neander was lying. During the month of December, 
a gang of robbers was operating in Bentonville. They walked dressed up as Santa Claus and broke into houses through chimneys. They put valuable goods into their Santa bags and walked straight out the door. When the neighbors saw them, they thought they were the real Santa. Finally, the police caught the entire gang. However, one of them claimed he was the real Santa and shouldn't be convicted for crimes he didn't commit. Detective Brightbrain was called to handle the case because he had seen the real Santa once when he was still a little child. He recalled that Santa was medium height. He was wearing a coat with six buttons and there was a pocket on the right. He also said that Santa's belt buckle was square. Take a look at the footage from the police station. Can you figure out who the real Santa is? It's the second one on the right. He fits all of Bright Brain's descriptions. It was raining when Bright Brain decided to drive down to the gym. Halfway there, a woman stopped his car asking for help. She said someone had just bumped into her car and drove away. When the detective took a look around, the only person next to the place of the incident was a man fixing his tire. The lady said that that was the car that bumped into hers. But when Bright Brain went to talk to the man, he said it couldn't be true because he was busy fixing his car the whole time. Can you tell who's lying? It's the guy fixing his car. The rain just recently started, which means that if he was fixing his car the whole time, the ground underneath it would have been dry. But look, it's wet. This means he's just arrived there and was actually the one responsible for the incident. The next day, Bright Brain left his girlfriend's house directly to his office building. He was late for work, so he ignored several stop signs along the way. A police car passed by him exactly at the moment he was turning the wrong way onto a one-way street, but the officers didn't arrest him. Why? Because the detective was walking, not driving a car. Duh! Around 8 in the morning the next day, Detective Brightbrain was on his way to get coffee when he saw a robbery happen. A masked person ran off with a woman's wallet. The detective ran after the thief and saw him entering a coffee shop. When Brightbrain went inside, he searched for the thief but couldn't find them. The person had taken their mask off. He told the coffee shop owner that one of their clients was a thief, and the owner closed down the shop so that the detective could question the people there. The first person he interrogated was Allie. She said she had been in the coffee shop for the last three hours, working on her laptop. Brian said he had just come inside to get an espresso to go. Catherine said she had just started eating her breakfast and didn't see anything suspicious going on. Lastly, he interrogated John, the coffee shop owner. He said he opened the shop at 7 a.m. and hadn't left the place since then. Bright Brain knew immediately who had done it. Can you guess who it was? It was Allie. She said she'd been in the shop for the past three hours, but the shop had just opened at 7 o'clock. At his office, Brightbrain received a strange text message from his workmate, Harry. The text said, Zucchini is in the fridge. Otherwise, I'm fine. Okay? The weird text made the detective think there was a message hidden inside. After a few minutes, he found a hidden word in the message. Can you guess what it was? If you pay attention closely, the first letter of each line can be mixed together to form the word zoo. Quickly, Brightbrain grabbed his things and drove to the local zoo. He arrived at the zoo and immediately saw the entrance to a secret passageway. The passageway led him to a network of underground tunnels. At the entrance to the first tunnel, there were venomous rats. At the entrance to the second tunnel, there was an explosive about to go off in five minutes. And at the entrance to the last tunnel, there was toxic gas. 
Which tunnel should he choose? The second one, of course. He can pass through the tunnel after the explosive goes off. At the end of the tunnel, he found himself in a dark room. As soon as he entered, the door locked behind him and he was stuck. The room was empty except for another door at the other end of the room. That door was sealed with a letter combination lock. There was a slip of paper with the following hint written on it. P plus 3, N minus 1, B minus 1. N plus 4, S plus 1. What's the code word? It took Bright Brain a while to figure it out, but he was able to crack the code. The code word was SMART. The key to this riddle was hidden in the alphabet. P plus its three following letters is S. N minus one letter is M, and so on. Phew, the door opened and led him to another room where he finally met Harry. Bright Brain untied his workmate and told him he was going to get them out of that situation. But when he looked around, he noticed they were standing at the bottom of a very deep well. Looking up, they could see the clear blue sky, but it looked like there was no way out. The detective felt soil falling onto their heads and he feared they were going to be buried in mud. Luckily, in an hour, both men made it out of the well alive. How did they manage to get out? They managed to tamp down the soil that was falling into the well. This way, they would get closer and closer to the surface until they managed to jump out and run away. That's it for Bright Brain's adventure today. That was a lot. Oliver is walking in the rain. Suddenly, he sees a woman without an umbrella or hat. But she's not getting wet at all. How is this possible? The woman is walking inside a covered area, such as a covered sidewalk. Four friends go hiking and take a picture by the lake. Can you spot anything weird? This guy doesn't have any reflection in the water. Sarah checks into a fancy hotel. She feels very hungry, but unfortunately Sarah missed the dinner hours. That's why she calls room service and orders a vegan dinner set. Fifteen minutes later, someone knocks on her door. She looks through the peephole first. Sarah. Oh great, a fake waitress! How did she know? The waitress is fake because she didn't know that Sarah ordered a vegan meal. Kelly and Kim start a quarrel on the plane. It's Kim's private jet, so she wants everything to be her way. But Kelly gets mad at her. She runs up to the exit door, opens it and jumps out. It happens so fast that the crew don't have time to do anything. Kelly doesn't have a parachute. She breaks her leg but survives. How come? The plane had already landed. Nick is driving down the road and his car runs out of gas. He sees a cabin in the woods and decides to ask for help. When he gets there, he finds three people inside. They offer to help him, but only if he agrees to stay there forever. Why? Nick stumbled upon a group of runaway criminals. They're afraid that he would tell others about their location. Early in the morning, Detective Robinson receives a call from his neighbor, Ethan. Ethan, please come as soon as possible. Someone attacked my wife. Robinson arrives at Ethan's house and sees this scene. Can you guess what happened to his wife? Take a look at the calendar on the wall. They pranked the detective because it was April 1st. The city has been taken over by zombies. Let's take a look at this group. 
Only one of these zombies is a male. Can you guess who? The first zombie is wearing a bra, and the second one has a badge with a female picture and name. Therefore, only the third zombie is a male. Tom works in a secret agency specializing in people with psychic abilities. He's having an interview with three people claiming to be superheroes, but only one of them really possesses some supernatural powers. Can you help him spot this person? Take a look at the third lady. She's holding her phone with the power of her mind without even touching it. Stella and Bella go on vacation. They take two pictures on the beach. Can you spot 10 differences between them? You can pause the video if you need additional time. Ready to see all the 10 differences? Here they are. Steve arrives at work and turns on the corporate laptop. Oh no, someone has changed the password. Steve looks around and finds a sticker with a clue. 32, 18, and 29. He enters the number, but it doesn't work. Can you help him crack the code? Steve should literally enter three twos, one eight and two nines through underscores. 222, 8, 99. Gabriel is an art teacher. He enters the studio to check his students' work. One of these people is a ghost. Can you guess who? It's the model. She's posing for a portrait, but everyone sees through her. Dan wakes up in a creepy cage. He needs to figure out a five number code to escape. He only has this picture as a clue. Can you help Dan crack the code? To solve this mystery, we need to count the number of legs that each object in this picture has. The human has two legs, the fish has zero, the ladybug has six, the dog has four, and finally the spider has eight legs. So the correct code is 20648. Alex went hiking and got lost in the woods. The sun had already set when he finally found a road. Three drivers stop and offer him a ride to the nearest village. Can you help Alex choose the safest option? There's a zombie arm sticking out of the second car's trunk, and the third driver has suspicious pointy ears and shiny eyes, so he's probably a werewolf. Therefore, Alex should probably trust the first driver. I'm very easy to lift, but very hard to throw. What am I? I'm a feather. Kim downloads a dating app, hoping to find her true love. She likes these three men equally. They begin to chat, and the guys send her some selfies. Each man claims to be single. But in fact, only one of them doesn't have a girlfriend. Can you guess who? Brian sent Kim a cute bathroom selfie. But take a closer look at his shelf. He has one male razor and another pink razor, which probably belongs to his girlfriend. So goodbye, Brian. Meanwhile, Kyle took a selfie in his bedroom. Luckily, he left the closet open so we could see his girlfriend's clothes and shoes. So only Harry is a single person, and Kim should give him a chance. Jenny goes for a walk to her favorite park. Suddenly, she gets attacked by a crowd of zombies. Jenny gets terrified and begins to run away. There are three possible routes in front of her, but only one of them will actually take Jenny to a shelter. Can you help her escape? Jenny should choose Route C. Ethan owns a successful flower shop. 
But today he's very upset. Someone has stolen all the red roses from the storage room. Ethan questions three suspects among his staff. Leah, the chief florist, says, I spent the whole day creating bouquets with pink lilies for a wedding ceremony. Donna, the manager, says, I don't know who stole the roses. I didn't even enter the storage room today. I was consulting our clients all day long. And finally, Mike, the florist assistant, says, Fresh red roses were delivered early in the morning. I brought them to the storage room, and I've never entered it again. Who's lying? Leah. There are no pink lilies in the bouquets that she made. Lauren changes a six-number password on the office door to avoid thefts. She leaves this little clue for all her colleagues. Bagel. Can you guess the correct code? To solve this mystery, we should calculate the number of each given letter in the alphabet. B implies 2, A implies 1, G7, and so on. So the final password is 217512. Helen meets a handsome guy at a supermarket. She falls in love at first sight. His name is Robert, and he came here with his sister. Can you guess which one of these ladies is his sister? It's the third woman. She's the only one who's shopping without a separate cart or basket because Robert carries it. The police officer is chasing Kendra who had just robbed a jewelry store. The teenager sneaks into the nearest school and the officer follows her. She notices Kendra's hoodie by one of the doors and enters the classroom. There she sees four students who look like Kendra. Can you decide who's the real robber? This one is Kendra. She has neither books nor pens on her desk. Let's go ahead and take a look at these two pictures. Can you spot 10 differences between them? Ready to see the solution? Here are the 10 differences. It's a Sunday afternoon. Most people are spending it at the local shopping mall. Nothing usually happens here. But suddenly a man snatches a woman's bag and runs away. The woman calls a security guard and yells, Don't just stand here! Go after him! But the thief has already disappeared into the crowd. Can you help the guard find the thief? He's over here. Sam gets promoted and throws a fancy party for his best friends. Josh, Kate, Brad, Bill, and Holly. Everything goes great. But the next morning, Sam finds out that someone broke into his safe and stole his family treasure, a golden egg. Sam questions his friends, but each swears to have nothing to do with the theft. The police officer looks through the pictures that Sam took yesterday. After comparing these two shots, he spots the thief. What about you? Yesterday, Holly was wearing a classy hat. In the first picture, the hat is pressed close to her head. And on the second one, the very same hat is much taller. That's because she hid the golden egg inside it. Violet returns from a business trip. She enters her office and sees a beautiful gift basket on her table. There's a love note from a secret admirer attached to the package. Violet gets very curious. She figures out three suspects and asks them just one question. Did you send me the gift basket? Liam replies, Nope, I would have sent you sunflowers instead. I know you love them. Jason says, I overslept today, and I've just arrived at the office, so I wouldn't have had time to prepare a surprise for you. And Kenny says, I didn't send the basket, but when I entered your room in the morning to put some documents on your desk, the basket was already there. Who's the secret admirer?
The love note is written on a pink sticker. Kenny has similar sticker notes in his workspace, and his handwriting is very similar to the love note. Busted. Tyler receives a message from his new girlfriend, Kitty. She invites him over for dinner. Tyler has never been to her house yet. He takes his scooter and hits the road right away. But unfortunately, he gets lost on the way. His navigator breaks down and shows him three confusing routes. Can you guess what route leads to Kitty's house? Tyler should take the first route. Alex is heading to a family dinner, but he's really broke and he only has eight chocolates. He needs to divide them equally between his three sisters. How many cookies would each sister get? Zero. Alex has chocolates, not cookies. Nellie's father has five daughters. The name of the eldest daughter is April, the second daughter is May, the third one is June, and the fourth daughter's name is July. Can you guess the name of his fifth daughter? Nelly. A gardening fair takes place in a village. The top five local gardeners show their best flowers, but one of them brought fake plants to prank the villagers. Can you spot the fake? Bumblebees fly around all the plants except for the fourth flower pot. Insects don't get attracted to these roses because they're artificial. Dylan is exploring a remote forest area. Soon he gets lost and has no idea where to go. Luckily he comes across a small cabin in the woods and sees a forester. Dylan. Hello, could you please tell me how I can get to the railway station? Forester. Go down this trail until you reach a crossroads. There, you'll see a rock with signboards. Just remember, the left one lies, and the right one tells the truth. Dylan follows his advice, and soon finds the rock. Can you guess which way he should go to reach the station? Since the left sign is lying and the right one is the truth, Dylan should walk straight ahead. Claire puts on a classy white suit and goes for a walk. Suddenly a big dog pops out of nowhere and jumps on her. The dog stains Claire's outfit with dirty paws. She gets furious and yells, whose dog is this? Can you spot the owner of this animal? It's the second lady. She's wearing the same collar as her dog, 